how's it going? Uh, so I'm going to do uh, another booster box opening. It's just uh, give me a couple seconds to get myself set up here, and I'll make sure that I'm ready to go. I'm also opening an additional ten packs of from the uh, bundle. I bought one because I wanted the checklist. <laughs> um, but yeah. Should be all ready to go here in a second. And uh, I'll start opening boxes, play some music, and we'll talk about the cards as I get to them. Also, before anything else, I'm. Ow! Fuck. I'm gonna grab myself my sleeves and things in case I pull any fancy, fancy invocations, which will play pay handily for another box. I played in three pre-releases. My store changed up their event types this time. I don't know if that was the case with everybody, uh, but because of that, I didn't get to play as many pre-release matches as I wanted to, and I just played a suitable amount. But I do love the dice that comes with these guys. Much cooler than the plain old standard ones. Which, if anybody knows me, or has played with me, or has seen my other talks on magic stuff, I love alternate dice. Especially like the Jeskai dice from uh, Kanza Tarker. They are probably my favorite ones. Whoops. I'm bumping stuff around. Alright. So I got sleeves handy, in case you pull something fancy. And let's get the music. So this is just going to be the Crypt of the Necrodancer OST because I fucking love it. And yeah. Alright. Let's recenter the little table now that I smacked it around a little bit. Yeah, because of the dice, I thought I would use my Cons of Tarkir playmat to hold all these guys. I don't know if you can see these on camera or not, but they are blue and very, very pearlescent. I guess they're supposed to look like sapphires or lapis lazuli or something like that, but they are cool. One of my favorite sets of dice in a while. I wish there was other colors! Ugh. Maybe the next set I'll have some other colors. Uh, well, yeah, let's open this box first. Into garbage. I have yet to open an invocation, and I did go to Midnight Draft with my girlfriend, and we, uh, Played a couple matches. Two games each. Two drafts each, I should say. And, uh... Didn't pull anything particularly amazing. My two pre-releases, though. I got Hazaret in the first two pre-releases. And ended up running, like, a red-white super aggro. Which was pretty fun. Sorry about banging the mic there. And I feel like he plays fantastically in a, in a limited format where you have to mulligan a couple times if you're not quite getting the lands you need and he starts off with a head start to get them ready to go. Other than that, Aketra, or Aketra? Aketra is uh, a little bit easier to turn on, but uh, not quite as effective or fast, at least until she gets going, but like a 3-6 double strike is nothing to sneeze at. Alright, these first 10 packs are going to be from the, the bundle, and I'm just going to, I'm not going to bring in the commons too much, but I will just quickly sort them into colors. Love the cartouches, they are so fun. I wonder if 
if there's any cards I haven't picked up yet. And then I will sort my uncommons and my rares and anything special that pops up. I also haven't got as many full art lands as I wanted yet, and no foils. But, uh, ooh, foil in the first pack. Drakehaven is a fantastic little dude. Especially in, oh yeah, never mind, this is the right way up. God, it's weird to look at. <laughs> I actually have the camera sitting in front of me and flipped, so to get it into the right position is a little weird. But yeah, Drakehaven is awesome. If you're in uh, blue, then you just pick up any cycling cards, which do actually play a huge part in making a card usable. You just get very flyers for spoil, but no fancies. Just a lizard lizard. I will treat foils as rares, because sometimes they're worth a couple bucks. If you guys have not played it yet, you should absolutely play Crypt of the Necronancer. It's uh, an amazing concept and the soundtrack is boss. I did get a full art land in that pack, which is nice. Um, they should just have full art lands in every set. I feel like it's. people deserve them. <laughs> it's like no reason to punish us. Same thing with the tokens, like it should always just be uh, a good token. Not, it never needs two sided to add cards, like who the fuck wants those? Guaranteed they're chucked out right away. Cool tokens, foil tokens, double sided tokens, and down with all that. Ooh, never got that guy yet. The legendary Minotaur. Neheb the Worthy. Out of Minotaur's control at first strike, he also has first strike. As long as you control one or fewer cards in hand, creatures you can. Minotaur's you control get to plus up. Or plus two, plus up. Uh, whenever I have it, the worthy deals combat damage to a card. Blech. Combat damage to a player. Each player discards a card. So he fits red, fits black, and he's a Minotaur Lord. So pseudo Minotaur Lord, I guess. Basic, basic lands. He's pretty cool. Uh, nothing crazy special, but um, I'm sure people want him in the Minotaur Tribal deck. Woo. I'm always a little miffed when they print like one card that fits a, a tribal thing in a standard set. I don't feel like they have a place, because it's just like, hey, I got two cards that do tribal things, and there's only three of these cards in the set, or like three of this tribe in this set, or the past few sets. the same as Drake Haven, except not repeatable, in the sense that when you use Drake Haven, you get a 2-2 flyer which can repeatedly attack, whereas this allows you to drain stuff, which is good in a different way. I'm going to count these split cards if they're two color as, uh, we'll just all be cold. That's really weird. Hey, I never got Temet, Vizier of Nekatman either, but he's a pretty good bear. 2-2 two, two for 2. And uh, beginning of combat on your turn, target creature token you control gets plus 1 plus 1 until the end of combat and can't block this turn. And you can embalm him for 5, so he's a pseudo creature lord. Or pseudo token lord, I should say. More basic. 
music. And I'm waving the shade. Oh yeah, that's one of the things in this set if you haven't looked at it before. Come on, focus. There we go. Uh, a lot of creatures with Embalm all have their own special token. So you don't have to bring back and use the little weirdo token. You can use a big card token. It's cool, because I like seeing lots of neat custom tokens, but uh, I'm a little little miffed that I'm going to have to collect fucking like 110 tokens or whatever it is if I want a playset of all of them, because I collect playsets as well. That's one of the things that these uh, box openings go to, is I get to filter out all my playsets of cards and keep a collection. List. Watch for Naga. Hey, some dual lands. I am always down for dual lands. Irrigated farmland. It is a dual plains island. It comes into the battlefield tap, and you get blue or white. So just good. Cycling makes it awesome if you're playing crazy colors, or you don't need slow land after a little while. But uh, yeah. Oh yeah, punch cards. So in some packs you get these punch cards. They turn rip out into little tokens for brick counters, minus one, minus one counters, exerted, and the bomb counters. So you get some tokens you can take with you. They're all double sided, so you get both types. You never actually run out. Uh, they're pretty useful, but uh, I hate carrying around lots of little things. Usually I just take a little box of D6 with me because it's less shit to carry. I did complete the Trials of Strength uh, as far as the game store stuff is concerned. Not all of them, but three of them now I think. But uh, I told them I'd hold off and pick up my fancy bolus D6s when I get in there next time. Ooh, the first rare. There, sorry, uncommon. This guy is a favorite of mine too. Do you remember Bloodstained Warrior? This guy is similar. Uh, costs a little more for repeatable uh, return from the graveyard. He's obviously intended for a black aggro deck because you want to play him, have him kill uh, or die, and then bring him back. Yeah, but. Because of that little limit at the end, he's a little hard to get out sometimes. But you can use him for, uh, was it Ronus? The, the crocodile guy on the screen there, I don't remember his name. Bontu? Bontu. Uh, so you can sack this guy repeatedly, get a drain out of him, bring him back. It's a little expensive, but you know, whatever. Full art black swamp, which I have a couple of already. Actually, I'm kind of high on the. Full art's coming out of these already. I'm just gonna check this because I don't know if I accidentally shuffled all my uncommon blues into here. There's only a couple of particular cards that I really like out of this set as far as stuff I want to keep for myself, other than collecting or playing. Uh, the blue and red mythics spells are, I think, fucking super fantastic, and I love them. Talking about Glorious End and As Foretold, of course. Oh yeah, Fling. Fling is amazing. Fling is fun. It's so stupid and great to use. Swing in, hit for the creature, and then sack the creature and do more damage. And if you got something like uh, Hazret's Favor, what's the other one? Insult? Double damage? <laughs> Hey, more dual lands. I'm always cool with that. Scattered Groves, same deal as the blue one. Enters battlefield tap, and it can tap for green or white, and also be cycled. And it counts as both a forest and a plains, so it can be fetched, which is 
never gonna probably matter in standard. Aside for a aside from a few specific fringe cases. I gotta get a box of cons sometime. I wanna unwrap some fetches. Wilds, kind of boring art for it, but me. Four of the clan, center, more monuments. Back at my multi colored card. I'm silly. Curator of Mysteries, a super limited bomb. Alright, come on, focus, focus, there we go. There's a 4 4 for 4 flying, which is like super good. Uh, it's a great finisher, and on top of that, you get your bonus of whatever you cycle or discard another card, you get to scry, so you get to choose if you want to keep that card or not, essentially. He also has a great cycling cost. One drop is cheaper than normal. Uh, it doesn't really change too much, because he's cheap for a big flyer. Like, you're going to get him out kind of often, <laughs> basically. Swamp. See? Garbage. This is useless. It's like the same card on both sides. I'm not even going to read it. Just check it out. <sighs> Curator of Mysteries was my promo in one of my pre releases. And uh, I played him in the, the third one where I did not use Hazaret. Because the first two were both Hazaret and it was red white and red white. <laughs> So my third one, I was Blue White Flyers, and Curator of Mysteries, a couple other uh, the Drakes, and like three Gus Walkers with cartouches and Good God. It was a really fun set to to play. Only doing two drafts though. After midnight, I was not quite of my right mind yet, so I wouldn't really know if it's a uh, the best drafting set yet, but uh, feels like you can do whatever you want. You can do two color, three color. There's a lot of pseudo fixing, and uh, it gets you there. So this is fucking super useless and limited. Dispossess. It's an anti Kaladesh card essentially, it's meant for your sideboard probably. Choose an artifact card name, search target opponent's graveyard, hand a library for any number of cards with a chosen name, and exile them. Then that player shuffles his or her library. So, if they're playing, say, the blue control deck that my buddy played at the last game day, where he only ran four fat casters or uh, the the blue gear hulk, uh, and then counter spells and burn spells and removal, and just played him till he got him back and fucking <laughs> blew things up constantly. Uh, you could do this and blow it right out of the water, and then his deck kind of has to rely on its burn. But, you know, it's just not great and limited, because you have to know what their deck is already. That's why it is sideboard fodder. Don't ever pick that, unless you really, really, really need it somehow. Woo! Hey, wow. That is a good last set of four cards. I have not got Kefnet yet, and that is probably the only mythic I'm going to grab out of those bundle packs, because there's only one left. This guy's probably my favorite god, just because he's crazy, but he is limited bait. Like, you should probably never use him, unless you're just going to have him there equipped with stuff to make some kind of use out of him. Like, he's not a bad mana sink for drawing cards, but uh, he's real hard to turn on. Seven or more cards in draft is crazy hard to get to, unless you've got insane amounts of uh, draw in your deck. But a 5-5 flying, destructible for three is bananas. Got a foil counting cheetah. 3-2 with flash for three, which is just fucking good. Super good. Full art island in zombie tub. Grab a uh, Steve. Wait, I just know what we're looking Alright.
How many of you guys, if, whenever you're watching this, would watch uh, a video series where you open a single pack of cards a day? It's very short, like 30 seconds. Close up, HD cam, with a nice mic to get all the green. And then just slowly open and reveal the cards. <laughs> it's like a ASMR type of channel. <laughs> Stir the sands, oh my god. This is there's a bunch of uncommons in this set that are kind of crazy feeling. This is one of the ones that I feel is really kind of super good. It's a six cost, three three or yeah, six cost, two black mana and four colorless. Create three two two black zombie creatures. So it's just fine for that cost. But cycling is awesome. And when you cycle it, you get a zombie anyways. So you draw a card, get a zombie for four, or you get three black zombies. Uh, not, you know, super, super crazy, but uh, it is, well, like, good value. And if you're in the zombie deck or something, like, yeah, snatch it up. It's a good end game, good mid game. Uh, Bounty of the Luxa was the rare. So at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, remove all flood counters from Bounty of the Luxa. If no counters are removed this way, put a flood counter on Bounty of the Luxa and draw a card. Otherwise, you add three mana, one colorless or a waste, uh, a green and a blue to your mana pool. So essentially what this says in a shorter form is in your first main phase of the turn before combat, uh, if, you, if this has a counter on it, get three mana. If it does not have a counter on it, put a counter on it and get uh, a draw card. Nothing too crazy, <laughs> but definitely rampy. Green blue feels like the ramp set in this uh, set, not just right street green or anything. Oh, this is All right, so I'm in the first pack of the, the booster box stuff now. I only got one mythic out of the 10 bundle packs, which was Kefnet the Mind Mindful. Two foil commons, which is whatever, and I think four four lands. Just count that. Three. The colors of Bolus. <laughs> uh, so, anybody hoping for like Bolus to just be dead, or have some kind of crazy, crazy cheap activation cost? I wanted to be kind of stupid, like, just stupid in a good way. Kind of like how Ugin was, because he was just an insane bomb, then, like, every single deck can play him. I want Bolas to be like that, like, pay any three separate colors of mana or something, and, uh, you can play him. And he's only a three-drop planeswalker or something. Something crazy. Because they already got Nisa in here being a blue-green X planeswalker, which is kind of weird. But, you know, whatever. Destined to lead. Yeah. Hey, Archfiend. He was the buy box promo, so I have the foil version. This guy's art's cooler, though. I don't really like the buy box promo's art. So this thing is another insane flying bomb. So he's a 5... Uh, sorry, 5-4 five, for 5. He's flying. Whenever you cycle or discard another card, put a minus 1 counter... Minus one, minus one counter on each creature your opponents control. Pleah! He's a repeatable, like, board wipe, essentially. And there are so many cycling cards in the set. Like, if you just got, uh, there's the, the one drop, black common. You can cycle it, or exile three cards from somebody's graveyard. Just cycle, minus one, or pay one black, cycle it, and deal minus one, minus one to your opponent's board. Like, holy Christ. Uh, if you have Winding Constrictor or something in a standard deck, like, uh, yeah, it's so sick. And a full art in the first pack. That's good. I did not buy a box of uh, Modern Masters to open. I did buy a box and draft with my buds, though. So I will probably pick on one of those boxes up a little bit later. Because the price dropped real cheap recently. Or pretty cheap. Jesus. Three cartouches in the first set. Three cards. Uh, and it was a sad box. I think Arid Mesa, or I got a Scalding Tarn in the action, which wasn't bad. But uh, there was like no other value in the set, 
or in the box, just real boring stuff. No blood moons, no damnations, no other fancy lands, no Tarmogoy, so it's just, just sad. Ooh, Foil Trial of Knowledge. And pull from tomorrow. Generic, but slightly better than the regular common draw spell that they always put in that's like a 5 cost or something. Uh, Drox cards, and then discard a card. So in blue, that's fine. You can draw 3 and discard 1 and still end up with a lot of cards in the end. And of course, for uh, Hefnit, or Kefnit, it's helpful to draw over 7, and then you're good to go. And uh, Trial of Knowledge. So when trial, of, uh, bleh, trial of Knowledge enters the battlefield, draw three cards, then discard a card. So it's actually the same as the other guy, but cheaper, and it's repeatable. Repeatable. Because you play a cartouche, like the blue one, which gives a guy flying, plus one, plus one, and draw a card for two. So play this, draw three cards, discard a card, whatever, you, you're up two cards. Play the, the cartouche, the blue one, and you're up another card, so you're up three cards, but I guess you did play two, so you're up one. Uh, and then you have a flying guy, and you can play Trial of Knowledge again! So, if you get Kefnet, and you get Trial of Knowledge, and the Cartouches, you're probably okay to get him, but it's still really hard to get him out. So you kind of need to use his effect, bounce the land, and then draw multiple cards a turn to just keep him active, but if you keep him active, you're going to win the game, probably. Like, 5-5 five, five flying on turn 3 is hard to deal with, even if he doesn't activate till turn 3 or 4. He's indestructible, so he's a little harder to kill. Not Hexproof. I wish he was Hexproof. Binding Mummy. Zombie Lord! Yeah, he's cool. It's good price too. It's a three drop, two three. All zombies you, or other zombies you control get plus one plus one. Pay two and tap him. All zombies gain minutes. Which <laughs> so most of your zombie tokens turn into three threes, and then you be blocked by two creatures. Oh my god! <laughs> How stupid will it get? They <laughs> claim. Uh, Weird card. I got it. Never used it. I feel like you could, but the cycling cost is just twice as good that way. All right. So basic land and throne of the god pharaoh. I kind of hate that they didn't put bolus in this set because of the dark intimidations from the last set. But yeah. so much horns all over the place. Uh, anyways, <laughs> it's two costs, beginning your end step. Each opponent loses life equal to the number of tap creatures you control. If you are on white, or black, or white-black, with zombies, with vigilance tokens, and stuff like that, this can win games. It's cheap, it's legendary, which means you can't play more than one, but you're probably not going to get more than one. Uh, probably. <laughs> uh, it just deals you an extra couple damage uh, a turn, and that's that's just fine. Especially if you're playing with guys at Zert, they stay tapped for two turns. So you deal two damage while it's tapped, uh, or stuff like the, 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 the Dread Wanderer. Yeah. One drop damage is battlefield tap. He can deal damage immediately the turn he comes in. Makes people kind of think about siding and removal. It's not a bomb, but it's a it's like a field enhancer essentially. Makes your field do more work. Hey, more dual lands. I won't complain about these, but they pff, I can't imagine them being super expensive. Like they're gonna be like five bucks. So everybody's gonna open all of them. But I already got scattered groves. It's the last one I pulled. Basic Swamp, Unwavering Initiate, I, I need to drink real quick. I'm bad at talking lots. Alright. Through like 
15 packs now, which is only about 5 packs of the actual box. So many cartouches per pack. It makes drafting hard. <laughs> when I open a pack with 4 cartouches in it and I'm like, <laughs> oh, I want like 3 of them. Untap target creature gets plus two and plus two and gains life and finish turn. That's fine. It's a good combat trick. Goodish combat trick. I wish it cost one, but with a lot of these cards with aftermath, they cost a little too much to cast both cards in the same turn. But uh, the advantage is you get two cards essentially for the price of one, and you can cast the other one later. It doesn't have to be in your hand or anything. So uh, the fight target creature you control fights target creature and opponent controls, which is fine. I just kind of hate the design that this is an instant, this is a sorcery, so you can't cast them as a combat trick for the both of them. But they're really kind of designed that way, and they're costing too much to play them both together. It's just, it, it's a weird design choice. I feel like there's only a couple of them that I'd play for their their top effect, uh, you know, like a regular deck or something. Yeah, Beast Token, this thing's fucking weird. It's like a crocodile or something. Look at that crocodile head with like lion feet, and I don't think you can tell what his tail is. But so another foil common, wander in death. Uh, surprisingly useful and limited. I wouldn't normally play it just for the two target creature cards in your hand, but cycling makes it a good option. And if you're playing and you're just not hitting those creatures, you can kind of get your dudes back or just draw more cards if you are head on creatures or something <laughs> Ugh, got the sniffles. it's uh... kind of starting to get into allergy season but we've had some weird weather getting hot then cold then hot then cold then hot then cold again and it's so frustrating a couple monuments. Uh, I didn't talk about them much yet, but they're all three cost, legendary artifacts, and they each relate to a color, which is uh, fine. Spells of that color cost one less to cast, and whenever you cast a creature spell, target creature you control gets effect, or whatever. Like, so this green one, target creature you control gets plus two, plus two, and gains trample on a turn. Uh, I think I got the black one here, and has it. Hazrats, whenever you cast a creature spell, you may discard a card if you do draw a card. Which is not what you want to do in that red deck, really. Uh, black one, bond two. Whenever you cast a creature spell, each one loses one life and you gain a life, which is better. The white one, whenever you cast a creature spell, target creature an opponent controls does not untap during its controller's next untap step. So, kind of weird. They have to be basically tapped already. Uh, a catcher's monument. White creatures you control. Blah, 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 sorry, white creature spells you cast cost one less. Whenever you cast a creature spell, create a one-one white warrior creature target with vigilance, which is really good in a white deck if you get it, because it's all about that stuff. Oh, and I actually have all of them. That's kind of neat. All five monuments. All right. Here's another one of those split cards, which I friggin' hate. Spring. Three cost. Search library, basically I can put in the battlefield tap. Show the library. Fine, that's an okay effect. It's more costly than the Aether one from uh, Aether Revolt. Six? To draw two cards? Like, fuck off! <laughs> but it's... It's got slight advantage, because the first half is okay. Second half, you can just dump the mana into it when you when you're like you don't have cards in hand, but you've got six or seven mana just sitting around. It's fine, but I hate it. I wish either half was cheaper. It's just frustrating. 
Regs to Riches. Another split card. Another card I'm not super fond of. Mini language for languages cost. Riches. Each opponent chooses a creature he or she controls. You gain control of those creatures. That part is okay. But they choose it, and it's a seven cost. It's, they give you a token, but if you cast it the right time, it's fine. Like, you really want to play these both at the same time, but who has 11 mana in one turn to play both of these things? Like, it's just not, not where you want it to be. I, f I feel like there's either going to be something in the next set uh, where it's just like... If you're playing in Aftermath costs, subtract five off the colorless things or something. Maybe. Uh, maybe that'll be that'll be uh, Bolus's ultimate. Cast Aftermath cards for free or something. I wonder what we're gonna get in the next set. Like broken gods, dead gods, or uh, just different gods. Maybe they're not indestructible anymore. Either hex proof. <laughs> Oops. That's not common. What am I doing? Wait, oh, come on. Stop giving me these fucking aftermath cards. I don't like them. This one's actually one of the okay ones. Four damage to a creature for two is right. The sorcery speed, which is not alright as much. And it's aftermath. Ribbons. Black Black X. Each opponent loses X life. That one's okay. Because if I can chuck this to my graveyard for two, which is okay, I will let this sit until I have eight mana, and I will ping a guy for six and surprise kill him, because he'll forget that I have it in the graveyard. Like, it's, it's okay. And another fucking double-sided ad card. Into the bin. I get an invocation, I might be a little upset because I'm one of those guys who does not like the card so much. After seeing one in person, uh, one of the guys beside me opened up one. I'm a little miffed that they're not full foil, and like it really sucks that they're not full art either. Like, basically, what they end up looking like is this is foil, and a little bit on the sides are foil, and this is not foil, this is not foil. On top of the font kind of sucking and the art not being the full card, it just feels let downy. Hey, one of the dual ends I did not get yet. Canyon Slough. 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 Canyon Slough. Uh, same as the other ones. It's Battlefield Tap. Taps for black or red. It is also a swamp and a mountain. And you can cycle it for two. Good and cool. Nothing crazy, but just cool. I just really feel like if Blizzard, or Blizzard Wizards wants to do uh, fancy cards for every set like this, they should just by default be full, full art foils. Like I don't, I don't get not making your cards feel cool because you just want to be different. I like the, the motif they got going on, like I like the side border and stuff. Uh, it makes it look very Egyptian-y. But I just hate the boring slate at the bottom and the bad font on the top. Uh, Honored Hydra, a 6 drop, 6-6, six, six, trample, and then bomb for 4. Which makes him way above cost if you get him in the graveyard. So, casting this guy twice is really cool. Casting him from the graveyard for the first time is pretty goddamn cool. Uh, Unfortunately, because those embalms come in as a token and this gets exiled, you can't bounce it to your hand and play it again and again and again or anything because embalm is semi-permanent. 
but he's just big snobby, good green. Base forest, some more tokens. We really haven't got that many like monocolor rares yet. A lot of lands, and a lot of stupid split cards, and some gold cards. Gus Walker, this guy does real work. He reminds me of, uh, not quite as good as, but uh, what the hell is it? That white two drop monk, 2 2, with prowess, and when he gets prowess, he gets lifelink. Not, not even nearly as good because it's not a repeatable increase, but uh, it's pretty good. Swinging in for a 3 3 flyer that can be a flyer or not is pretty solid. Hey, it's the Kitty Lord. Regal Caracal. Regal Caracal. Come on, focus. There you go. Other cats you control get plus one, plus one, and have life link. And when uh, Regal Caracal enters the battlefield, create two white cat creature tokens with life link. So, there's a one drop, one, one life link cat at common. And you can bomb him for one white, and this guy creates two more cats. So, you've got your Cat Lord. I think he's cool. I haven't got to use him. It's actually the first time I've seen him. But uh, for a 5 drop, he's fine. You get like 7 power for him. And lifelink. And you can get more cats pretty easy in this set. Well, sort of easy, I should say. I don't think there's that many actual straight cats in white. There's just the 1 drop. There's the other ones in green, like the leopard. And there's the cat snake in green the rare one, but uh, not a lot of pure cats, I don't think. Ugh. Hey, it's my token lord, unblockable maker man. Damn it, Vizier of Nectman. I already got him, that's why I'm not describing him again. <laughs> if you missed it, scroll back, I guess. Sandbill, got him before, so I'm not gonna like focus on him. But I like him. He's one of my favorite pairs in the set. It's a lot of one drops. A lot of pretty good one drops in this set. In fact, one of my favorite one drops in a while is the red rare one drop. Prowess, which is probably my favorite uh, like keyword. I really like the Jeskai stuff in there, so anything that feels reminiscent to that is never a bad thing in my book. Okay, so... Ah, uh, nothing. Nothing! Okay, this guy's a beast. Crack it on the crossing. He's a 4 cost, 5 4 haste. Like, ugh. And whenever he ends the battlefield, put a 1 1 minus 1 minus 1 counter on target creature you control. Which either means you put it on him, and you get a 4-3, which is still good. Uh, or you put it on something else, like a man dork, like Oshara Cultivator. A 0-3, which you're going to sacrifice anyways, probably, or just chump block stuff. So, whatever, you get a 5-4 haste for 3. Or 4, sorry. Approach of the Second Sun, I friggin' love. I'm a sucker for janky stuff, and I love making it work. As in, my game day deck is going to be Triska Decapobia. And it was a really solid deck last game day, only made better in this game day. Uh, basically, the approach of Second Sun, if Approach of the Second Sun was cast from your hand and you've cast another spell named Approach of Second Sun, 
this game, you win the game. Otherwise, put Approach the Second Son into its owner's library, 7 from the top, and you gain 7 life. So if you get to 7 mana and you cast it, <laughs> have fun, you just stay yourself alive for a couple turns, use some draw, get yourself ahead. Uh, so I got a foil uncommon, and it was Weaver of the Currents. And this is another reason why I feel like blue-white is our again. Uh, blue white is blue white. Blue green is the ramp set in this set. So you get a three drop, two two mana door that gives you two colorless. Doesn't fix, but it does ramp, and it fits with the the bounties of the Luxa. All right, so I got like twenty two packs or twenty one packs left. I would like one invocation. I haven't got any mythics in this box yet either, so we're overdue for some well placed statistic mythics. Ooh, here's a real good uncommon I like. Played him in the in the Hazaret deck a lot. Three drop and caught on truck crasher. 3-2 haste, and you can exert him, and target creature can't block this turn. So, turn 3, turn 4, whatever, uh, if they swung in, you get to punish them by making their only creature that what they had out not blockable. And there's the non foil version of this guy. Just a, yeah, common. And the rare was Nehep the Worthy, which I already also got. So, pseudo-minotaur lord type guy. Free drop. And basic planes. I think a cat. That's the mom token. Is like a cat. Come on. Jesus. Focus. There you go. Oh. Ah, oh, messing up all my sorted nicely piles. Hey, there's a mythic. Ronus the Indomitable, the green god. He's fucking busted. Three drop, five five, death touch, destructible. He cannot attack until you control, or unless you control another creature with power four or greater. In green, wins no problem. And then you pay three, and another target creature gets plus two, and oh, and game trample until end of turn. So you have a two drop. You play it on turn two get this guy on turn three. Uh, the next turn, if you have anything, you can play it and make another creature, or you can pay his cost and give that other creature plus two, and then you have a four greater creature, and you can swing it with this guy. And so they can chump him, or block him, but he's killing whatever he touches, unless it's another god. Four at swamp. Token. Uh, well, now I have three of the five gods. I have still not got Bantu or Oketra. Come on, booster box, finish my set. Oh, here's another one of my favorite uncommons. Uh, Bone Picker. One picker costs three less to cast if a creature died this turn. Flying Death Touch. So, if your creature died, or their creature died, like if you have removal, he's a one drop. One drop, three two, flying Death Touch. Whoa! Makes him pretty strong. And this is the cover art, of course. Guy getting stabbed. Oh, sorry, cover art. It's the art on the play mat. Team worthy. This is one of those ones that's enhanced by cycling so much. If you need to real, really deal with something big, it's 5 cost, instant, deal 7 damage. Or you can cycle it for 4, draw a card, and deal 2 damage, which is pretty good. 
and the flexibility is awesome. So here's another one of those weird blue cards that gives you the draw. You, come on, you can focus camera. There we go. New perspectives, six costs, and battlefield draw three cards. As long as you have seven or more cards in hand, you may pay zero rather than pay cycling costs, which is a lot to get there. I'm sure there's going to be a way to like cheat that to the field, and then it may become a lot more useful because you can draw cards for free. But seven or more? Why is it that? Why is it not like five or six? Maybe too good then. I just feel like seven's kind of impossible to hit because you're not playing cards. You're just holding on to them. Trial of strength, one two one unit. Hey, look at this. Another fantastic uncommon. Two drop, four three. And it's bad for the discard card. Fine. In red, that's great. You kinda want it for Hazaret. Uh, so the rare was anointed procession. It is, if an effect would create one or more tokens under your control, it creates twice that many tokens of those tokens instead. This doubles your trials, your white uh, cartouche, and your white god. So if you get it, you're great. Yeah, whatever. I think it costs a little too much for four. You have to be in a real dedicated token deck to make a lot of use of it. Or just be in the right deck and need an extra uh, spell slot in your white deck. But, uh, it's pretty expensive. That is weirdly fun to draft, but at the same time, a lot of the cards don't feel like they're playable in draft. Oh, hey, a mythic. It's an expensive mythic. It's a draft trap. Cruel Reality, 7 cost. Enchant player. At the beginning of Enchanted Player's upkeep, that player sacrifices a creature or planeswalker. The creature can't, or the player can't, he or she loses 5 life. This is not a May ability, they have to, which does put them on a clock, but uh, it's, it's a very slow turn 7 clock. Feels like it's in the same boat as the coming of the second sun thing. Where, like, if you get it, and you can activate it and rush it, you're probably doing good, but... Wait, I mean, like, you're not doing good already? Like, that doesn't turn the game around for you in one go, it takes a couple turns. Second Sun is the same boat, and they're too expensive. Oh, I thought I got, like, two foil lands. Oh, I did get a... Okay, well, that's weird. I got Sheltered Thicket, a dual land. Forest Mountain. Come in, tap. Tap for red or green. Cycle two. Like I said, I'm cool with as many of those as I get. And then I got a foil basic mountain. Not a foil full art, because I also got a full art in this. And I think it's the first green full art I've gotten in any of my stuff so far. Leave the foil. Doesn't look like a crazy box yet, but I did get three mythics in it so far. As even only a couple packs ago, I said I haven't pulled any mythics yet. I got Ronus and uh, Crow Reality, and what was the other one I got? Maybe I only got two. Ronus and Crow Reality. No, I feel like I got another one. I'll look at it later. So many cartouches. Giant spider. Minotaur. Weakness. In the center. Serpent. Battlefield. Scavenger. Correction. Piece of mana. Ooh! Uh, the, one of the good reddish burn spells. Uh, three drop. Deals three damage to each creature. It's 
kind of a board wipe in this set. There's not a ton of creatures that have four toughness. There's a surprising amount that are five threes and four threes and two threes or less. Uh, and you can cycle it for three, which is a little expensive because you kind of wanted to smash the board with it. That's the first mono red rare I've gotten. We got a basic forest and a foil aftermath card. And this is one of the ones I said before was actually okay. Where I'm actually kind of happy to pay either half of the effect. Cut, deal for an average creature, or blah 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 blah. Each one loses X life. So it's a black red card. That was a double rare pack. Cool. No invocations as of yet. And I still need the white god and the black god. And then I have all the gods. Douche. Oh, I haven't actually seen this one before, so I'm just going to show it off a little bit. The Malmer Tools. Activated abilities of creature cards in your graveyard cost one less to activate. Tap an untapped zombie you control. Target player puts the top card of his or her library into the graveyard. Weird mill, cheap and bomb. It's alright. Kind of useful. I'm not sure the exact deck it. Oh, I hate this card. I've gotten this card so many times so far. I think I have like three or four of it now. Gene's Intervention. It's similar to the black one where it's like you need to know the opponent's deck to make it useful. Or it should have like a bounce effect in it as well. It's enchantment, four drop, getting intervention is about to choose a card name. Opponent can't cast spells with chosen name. Prevent all damage that will be dealt to you and permanence you control by sources with the chosen name. So if they had a crazy token deck, it's actually worth it. Uh, if they have a repeatable god card that they've been nailing you with in the last games, it's probably okay. But it's so specific that you just really need to know it. Like, I don't like having, having to know what my opponent is already going to play. To play a card that feels harder to deal with on like random, random games and stuff. In some stuff it's fine, in most stuff it's not going to work. Especially not in draft. Please move forward. Token. And the Heart Piercer Manticore, so it's fling on the Manticore. So it's 4 drop, 4 3. See, it has that 3 toughness thing. Uh, when Heart Piece of Manicor enters the battlefield, you may sack another creature. When you do, Heart Piece of Manicor deals damage to you with that creature, target, target creature, or player. And you can embalm it for 6. So, as a 4-4, four, four, sorry, a 4-3 four, for 4, it's fine. In red, that's, that's kind of where you're probably going to sit up. You're just going to swing in for crazy. But you get to bomb something with it, which is okay. It's fling on a card, on a body. But uh, if you get two or three of those, then you're, you're, you're going to use them all. Whoops. Uh, you need insult or fling to fling this thing after you flung the other thing, and then you can bomb this to fling another thing. Oh, whoops. copycat. He's a slightly better copycat for cheaper because he's, well, sort of cheap. Uh, most of the copycat cards I think I've seen play uh, or sort of come out have been like three drops, uh, four drops on occasion. But uh, you, have maybe, bleh, you may have Vizier or many faces in the battlefield of copy of any creature on the battlefield except if Vizier many faces was embalmed, the token has no mana cost, it's white and a zombie in addition to its other types. Copy it, it dies eventually, and then you bring it back and copy something else, which is cool. He's great, he's not fantastic, he's just fine. Oh, something that's weird with uh, the bundle does not come with all full art lands. 
like the Zendikar ones did. I don't. I think they want to do that to force you to buy more bundles. You get an 80 card land pack with 20 full art lands in it, which is a, kind of a bummer. But uh, you also get like a 20 card token deck or pack. I don't know if the random yet. I haven't opened it. I will open it a little later. But uh, you can see most of the tokens for sure. Might even just be one of each of the tokens. Hey, more dual lands, God damn it. I think I've got three of this irrigated farmland now. Other creatures you control also have haste, and you can pay a white and tap to untap another target creature. <laughs> okay, yeah, that thing is, it's everything basically, and just Christ. So essentially it's a 6-4 with first strike, or rather, it's a 3-4 double strike, but count as a 6-4 with vigilance, haste, flash, give all your creatures haste, and also untap creatures. Whoa. Just, just a lot of, a lot of keywords, <laughs> and not really that expensive either for what it is. It's a, it's a bomb. The flash double strike thing is kind of screwed up, actually. It's so mean. Sensor. Hey, look at that cruddy black rare I didn't like the first time. Blech. Okay, now I think I'm at four mythics, which is higher. And I still got eight, nine packs left. Doesn't mean I got another mythic in there, but I really want one of invocation. The yeah, nice boon. Especially because the last couple of booster box games I did, I did not get anything crazy. Battle for Zendikar really seemed to be my jam, where I just got freaking tons and tons and tons of masterpiece stuff. Not a bad pack there. Drakehaven, you guys saw it already. It's cool. Uh, nothing fancy, nothing, nothing bad. Foil Compulsory Rest. I like this. Cheap pacifism. And then also makes them eventually lose the creature. Two life is nothing, so who cares? But uh, I draft this, and I will draft like five or six of this because people pass on it. But like, you get to swing in for free. You stop big monsters. You can kill gods with it. Like, it's great. Battlefield target one sacks creature for two. That's a good effect. When you a card you hand is battlefield, you control return card of mesh in your hand's hand. To owner's hand, I should say. Blah, blah, blah. Which makes it so friggin' busted. Uh, if you get two or three trials and uh, the white and black cartouches, you're on removal spree, basically. Curator of Mysteries. Got it before. It's a bomb. It's a blue bomb. Okay. Some very weird 
spread of cards here. I've gotten a lot of the same rares. I feel like I have been missing certain rares. But I've gotten duplicates of several now. It's a weird box. Drop when it comes to the target of the spell, stack it. Which means it won't get exiled or bounce your hand or whatever, and then you can bomb it. 2 3 for 2 is fine. Even at a slight downside, he's cool. Mouths to feed. <coughs> One of the okay to play aftermath cards. 3 3 green hippo for 3 is fine. Vanilla. Aftermath, draw a card for each creature you control with power 3 or greater. Group 4. Okay, yeah, this kind of sucks, but if you're playing green, you're going to get there. Probably. I mean, you probably already got several 3-3s three or 5-4s or 4-3s or etc, etc. <laughs> There's enough green shit in this set that is just big to start with. Alright, alright. Time for invocations? Maybe? Let's see what we get. Oh, I can see it. It's an invocation. Eh, whoa. Eh, eh. Okay. Bounty the Luxa. So, it's up for its ramp. Alright, I'm glad I got one. I got. Counterbalance. It's a. I think. Yeah, counterbalance. <laughs> Hard to read a little bit. Not the worst, but it's just not good. The, it's hard to read the mana cost, too. They're just symbols, no colors. Uh, you deal with the color of the card from here. Uh, two blue. Never an opponent casts a spell. You may reveal the top card of your library. If you do, counter that spell if it has the same converted mana cost as the revealed card. I'm not a particular fan of counterbalance, but uh, I know there are decks that make use of it. So that's why it's valuable and be pretty. But yeah, see what I mean? It's got the trim that's shiny, like the gold bits, basically, which is cool. But I don't like the plain bits here and the plain bits on the side. I feel like it should have been a little more full art and a little more foil. Or they should have designed it to have more gold on it, like a gaudy uh, gaudy Egyptian tomb, but, well, I got an invocation. I'll look up the price of this after, just because I'm, I'm curious if it's enough buying another box. It's not Force of Will, not $300, but probably about 60 bucks. I'm going to guess. People like fancy foils. And I'm happy I got one. Mm -hmm. it's a, not a bad box in the end, then. Hey, a white full art and insult to injury, one of my actually okay cards. Uh, so, it's expensive. Ugh. Ugh. Uh, insult to injury. Insult gives you damage counter in the event of this turn. If the source you control deals damage to this turn, it deals double that damage instead. This does not mean a single source, this means any source you play this turn deals damage. So, attacks, burn spells, multiple copies of fling if you got the mana for it. And the aftermath one, injury. Target, injury deals two damage to target creature and two damage to target player. For three, it's okay. You can play it later if you've got better stuff to play with insult this turn. Or this is a six cost, four damage to creature, four damage to player, which is not terrible. Kills a creature, <laughs> does some damage to a player, and then you can swing it and do lots more damage. So it's it's right in that red wheelhouse of uber, uber aggro, especially with uh, Hazaret if you got lucky. All right, Green Shepherd. I didn't get the red guy. I wanted the red one drop, or the other red drop that is uh, 
two good red drop, two good red one drops. Yeah, but I have not yet gotten the as foretold yet. Hey, there we go. Speak of the devil. Soul Scar Mage. He's fucking rad. I really like him. One drop, one two prowess. Great. It's not a swift spear, but that effect makes up for a lot. If a source you control deal non-combat damage to a creature and opponent controls, put that many 1-1 one, one counters on that creature instead. It's permanent burn. Huh. It also means you can wear shit down, like over a couple turns. Uh, there's a 1-drop in here that's not normally playable, but deals 1 damage to each opponent's creature. With this guy, you, you chuck every single copy that you get in the deck, and just wipe the board with two drop cards. And there's also Magma Spray in here, which is essentially put two minus one minus one counters on target creature and scry two, which is like, okay. But it's gotta be the right stuff. Whoops. Wow. Oh. Three cartouches in a row. Coming up on the last three packs. Can I get a second invocation? For a second. Hey, 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 that made the box worth it. I got a Gideon. Another not quite Alley of Zendikar, but fucking super busted Gideon just the same. Uh, until your next turn, prevent all damage to target permanent. Blah, blah. All damage target permanent would deal. Uh, until end of turn, Gideon of Trials becomes a 4 4 human soldier creature with indestructible. Still a planeswalker, prevent all damage that we dealt to him this turn. So, uh, that's his zero. His other zero is you get an emblem with as long as you control a Gideon planeswalker, you can't lose the game, and your opponents can't win the game. <laughs> oh. So, yeah, I'm sure some of the people that may watch this have seen the Gideon tribal deck. <laughs> oh boy, is it stupid and great. Actually, pleasantly, pleasantly happy with this box now. Doesn't matter what else I get; it's all gravy. And I have the worthy. That's the third freaking one of these I got. Uh, foil Shrim of Keldrake. The beefy flyer. The four cost or five cost three four flying with cycling two. Whoa! The versatility is awesome. And if you get this guy or the Sphinx. It fucking cycle it and get more shit. Ooh, worm token. I haven't seen that one before. So I guess the only token I haven't seen yet is probably the Gideon emblem. I didn't actually see any emblems. Is it only Gideons in this set? Two drop. Sweird. Or sorry, three, four drop. Never mind, I completely read that as the wrong card. Uh, this is the weird one. Put target spell or non land permanent into its owner's library second from the top. And then memory, which I think is completely unplayable, like literally. There's got to be a good use for it. I just don't see it, and I don't feel like it'd ever be worth it. Six cost. Each player shuffles his or her hand and the graveyard into his library and then draws seven cards. Too expensive and fucking weird. Like, however way you play that, that means your opponent really gets the first use of all those cards. Unless you're really, really hard up for graveyard hate, then I don't think it's even worth playing. Ever. Uh, or unless you get some wonky combo with it. If it costs two blue, or it was an instant, or anything else, it would be okay. 
Alright, let's see if this last pack holds some extra lottery. Red Mythic. Glorious end. It's the red counter spell for anything in the game. It's a three drop, instant, and the turn. Exile all spells and abilities on the stack, including this card. This player whose name it's turn uh, players whose turn it is discards down to his or her maximum hand size, damage wears off, and this turn and until end of turn effects end. And then beginning of your next end step you lose the game. So my favorite part about this card is going to be trying to play four of in a deck and playing it on the opponent's turn on the first spell they cast, exile everything in the turn, go to my turn and end up with uh, a free board basically. Swing in for like six or something, it's not going to be that hard in the early game. Leave my mana open and cast it again. <laughs> and end their turn on the first spell they cast, counter every single thing that comes out, and pass the turn back to myself, and do it again, and again, and again, until they just lose their scoop. <laughs> so that box well, didn't start very good, and it turned out very good. Uh, here, I'm just going to quickly sort these guys out a little bit. Commons. Piles. And we'll take a look at the stuff I pulled. So, the bundle didn't get me anything crazy. I think it got me Ketnik. And But the box got me a couple crazy things. One being the Invocation, and Gideon from Ronus. And Glorious Hand's not worth anything, but I want it. <laughs> I just really like that card. It's my kind of janky stupid. And Soul Scar Mage, which I did not get yet, and I was super glad to pull. Let's just quickly sort these into... There are a lot of good non-basic lands that are all very limited playable. Fane uh, of Bluffs, it's just whatever. It's fixing, it's bad fixing. Fixing them out. Squinch Desert, it's fun. Deal of damage, task for colors. Uh, my favorite. Let's see here. Maybe it's the uncommon one. Whoop, 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 whoop. Dunes. Uh, taps for one colorless, or you pay one, sack it, put a minus one, minus one on target creature. Which is just, just great. Like, I'm super fine to play that. Especially if, uh, <laughs> if I'm in, like, a real aggro deck with low creature costs, or I'm playing monuments to lower the rest of my creature costs. Like, yeah, fucking whatever. Throw that in. And I'll get some, some free removal. Alright, so for the white rares, I got Gideon of the Trials, 
Gideon's intervention, the United Procession, and Approach of the Second Son, and Regal Character. So, Approach of the Second Son, I'm a big fucking fan of. Uh, Regal Character, I hadn't got, is cool. Northern Procession is situational deck. Gideon's intervention is sort of a situational thing as well. Always down for more janky win cons, and always down for Gideon's. Especially when he's like 35 bucks or whatever. It's just, just good. Probably go down a little bit, but he's probably just gonna be solid. So for Red, I got Glorious End, Skull, Scar Mage, yes. Heart Piercer, Mana Cord, Falling Suns. All three pretty good red cards. These are my happy place cards, though. <laughs> Alright, I think I've got a mythic in every color out of all these packs. Dispossess, fucking ugh. Dispossess. Two Dead Wanderers, two Dispossess. Archfiend of Infer and Cruel Reality. Cruel Reality's cool. It's just too fat. I think there's probably a good way to get it out for cheap. Uh, Archfiend of Infer is fucking bonkers. Dread Wanderer's favorite, Dispossess, and fucking hate it. <laughs> You see what I mean? I'm going to go ahead and doubles? I got a lot of doubles. Alright, so blue. Got a lot of blue rares. Commit. Carry to memories. Drake Heaven. Visit your main faces. New perspectives. Full from tomorrow. Kefnet. And Courier of Mysteries. And Drake Haven. Double, 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 double. Kefnet. Cool. I need more gods. Oh, I did get him. <laughs> A mythic in every color, except for the gold ones. You have the worthy Bound of the Alexa. Samet. Oh, I did get a gold one. <laughs> I got a mythic in every color, okay. Uh, Samet, the Voice of Descent. Another Nehep. Temet, the Seer of Nact Nact Nactamon. Throne of the God Pharaoh. Another Bound of the Alexa. Another Temet. Another Neheb. Not get a mythic artifact? I don't know if there is one. But Samet and Voice Dent busted. Prepare to fight, rags to riches, cut into a ribbon, insult to injury. And for the green. Mouse defeat, most indomitable, honored hydra. Not many greens. But mythic in every color. <laughs> I wish I got some foil dual lands. What is the one I'm missing? Blue black? I think it's blue black. Well, got some lands. And foils. Big money. Vacation, counter spell. Rosal Drake, Pulse your rest. Cut two ribbons. Rare foil. Basic lands, commons, trail of knowledge, fence, cheetah, threshold wizard. Alright. So, as promised, just because I got the invocation and a couple things, I will take a quick peek at the cost, just so people are curious how much the average stuff is worth here. I don't think counterbalance is worth that much. But I could be wrong. is worth $24.39 right now. Ronis is worth $16.80. Glory uh, Bringer is $12. Wow. Uh, Hazard Fervent is $8. Glorious End is $3. <laughs> well, I'm still happy with it. Samet the Voice of Descent is $3.71. Uh, Cruel Reality Soul Scar Mage is nice and cheap. Should buy some more of those. $2.60 uh, for Soul Scar Mage. Kefnet is 508. I don't even 
see cruelty out of you on here. It's probably bulk, I'm guessing, man. It's 88 cents. <laughs> mm, cut to ribbons. What's the foil version of it? Four bucks. Okay, for a 75 cent card. Uh, and now, invocations. Force of Will. Ooh, it dropped a bit. 221. Cryptic Command, 70 bucks. Ronus, once we had streets, Pact of Negation. Seven eight. Containment Priest. Days, Mind Twist, Spell Pierce, Dark Winter, Counter Spell. Oh, did I get like the cheapest kit location? No, Counterbalance at 34.50. Alright. Not the cost of the box, but between these two guys and a couple other cards, probably 100 bucks.